Hey YouTubers, we are back in the garage for some more projects. Uh, today we're thinking about building a welding table out of this junk here. So, uh, a little side work pays the bills sometimes. This is from a, a job I was doing. They just wanted the pipe and the satellite mount cut out of their yard and said take it away. So I did. And I was trying to figure out what to do with it and it looks like it would make a pretty cool table because it adjusts up and down and back and forth in all directions. Um, that's the piece of pipe or tubing that it was mounted on. And these are some big 10 hole split, split ring rims that a buddy didn't want. Can't really get a whole lot of parts for these anymore. He upgraded and I ended up with that. So the idea we're looking at here is making a table out of a welding table. And as you can see by my fancy drawing, we are looking at 40 inches high. That's about valley level on me. If you were good at math, you would know that that means I'm six foot tall. Uh, Alright, we're cutting with our Jepson hand me down chop off saw here. Chop saw, chop off saw. Nice. Um, our 33 and a half mark is right here. This thing was stuck in the ground, probably another good 12 in, another foot, 12 inches. And you can see the bottom side's kind of rotted out. But that's okay because we don't need all that. We'll save that for some other project. And I'll throw the earplugs in so we're being a little safer today. Not by much. And I don't know if my wheel is big enough to cut all the way through this tube, so we might have to cut it twice. Try to line my cut back up here. Close enough. You can feel the power in that bad boy. Oh, shit. Hit the camera. Awesome. All right, guys, I got my pipe or tubing cut, <clears throat> and I was trying to figure out how to mount this in the wheel. And what really would have been cool is to have a like a quarter inch plate cut out with this bolt hole pattern and a hole in the center to fit this through. I got it going through because I want all the weight to sit on the ground, not on the plate. But it would have been cool to have that big plate cut out and then big old bolts coming through here, but I don't really feel like driving all the way out to work to cut a plate and negotiating on prices and yada yada. So, we're just going to stick on some square tubing here just to hold everything in place. I'm not going to be putting any real big loads or anything on this table. It's kind of just to keep me from being on the ground using these get a raise pads for your knees and if you remember on the trailer mods video we did some leveling and some lessons on leveling we're going to do the same thing here today with our levels so back and forth 
Yeah, it's pretty close to level. And going this way, pretty close to level. Now you're probably thinking, oh, it's not exactly level. Well, it's got a little bit of wobble to it. And it's on a concrete floor, which probably isn't flat. So we're going to roll with that. And I'm going to use these two pieces here to hold the pipe in the center. And I got it close to center, the pipe here. Let's see where the tape measure's at. 4 and 5 eighths, 3 and 5 eighths, 3 and a half. Close enough. So I'm going to get these tacked on. Using the old Esau Rebel today, again, uh, 332 7018s. And that looks pretty good there. And we'll stick on our level on our piece of pipe before we tack or weld here to make sure our pipe is standing straight up in the air. Really doesn't matter since our uh, our top piece is going to be adjustable. We can adjust it whichever way we really want to. Now, I usually save the stubs. You know, you got a few inches of a welding rod stub. They're good for putting tacks down. If you're working for a big company and they see a bunch of stubs that long, they get they'll get mad at you. We'll let you know it because you're costing them money. And you hear the fan is rolling. Okay, this piece of tubing is not sitting very flat, and I don't know. Looks like the tax pulled it over, so that's my fault. Might have a little bit of gap to fill on that. We might have to get out the old 6011, the farmer friendly rod. Grab another stub here. Need to get an auto dark hood. All right, let's get our tubing leveled out. So well, that's pretty good on left to right. Let's see if I can keep it there. All right, I'm having grounding problems here. I don't know if you could see the arc jumping around, it was jumping back and forth. And that is level. Okay. Perfect. Let's weld it. Put some more tacks so nothing else tries to move on in here. I don't know what the material is for these big, uh, big split ring wheels. 
it seems like it's steel, it looks like it's been welded. Who knows what the processes are after that. I don't know if they do some sort of heat treat to them or the kneeling process. Well, if you guys heard that, that was attack breaking. Almost got the base finished. I'm going to stick on this top piece and see what she looks like. Come on. That's one of the bad things about low hydrogen uh, welding rods is they're sometimes hard to start. Good enough. All right, guys. So the only thing hanging onto this tube, this pipe, whatever, is two little one-inch welds on both sides of it. So that's not real super strong. We don't really need to be, you know, able to hold thousands of pounds with this thing. But it would still be nice just to know it's not going to fall apart on me, break on me, and try to hurt me or something. So we're going to add a couple more passes on this weld. This tubing's really thin. I think it's only 14 gauge, 80 thousandths thick. I'm trying not to burn through as we go. Actual wall of the pipe is about 3 16 so a little bit different material thickness. That makes me feel a little bit better. Not too bad. Okay, so here's the meat and potatoes of the whole project. Here's this free contraption that I acquired. Uh, and I'm kind of looking at everything. Everything's 
very labor intensive to to move around. I've got a big inch and an eighth. Well, it's not that big. The the wrench size is inch and an eighth. For the big bolt going through here that holds the whole tubing assembly together. Big piece of all thread. Uh, it's got a smashed end with a hole on it um, to pull back and forth, change the angle. Another big bolt down at the bottom and then another leveling bolt here off to the side and a bunch of these square heads to lock the pipe down on top of the other pipe. This is three and a half ID so we're going to call it three and a half inch pipe. The pipe we just welded was three inch ID so we'll call that three inch pipe. I always get tubing and pipe mixed up, I believe, and please tell me if I'm wrong. Pipe is ID, tubing is OD. Um, we'll, I'll research that and we'll get into that later. But these square heads here are getting in the way of this thing going full 90, which I'd like to have the table go 90. And then also be able to flip it up 45 or <clears throat> straight up and down so we can do some out of position test plates or projects or whatever uh, looking at this thing I mean the the build quality is kind of amazing it's all real thick stuff these are big old uh, 5 8 11 all thread bolts and big old weld nuts on there I, actually I'm not sure if they're weld nuts they might just be normal nuts welded to that uh, 3 16 on the pipe so I think that's uh, actually I'm not even gonna say what schedule that would be that looks like 5 16 or 3 8 plate here 8 gauge gussets yeah the thing's well built and the round part on it here is 2 foot I'm uh, still not sure if I'm gonna put a round make a round table or do a square table but that might be a good idea I was looking here at this bolt this nut I might weld this nut and then in turn weld the nut here to the plate just so I could come at it with an impact and change the angle real quick so I don't have to get wrenches and stuff out I might do that Let's see if that'll work Anyway, I'll mess with this a little bit and then we'll get it on the on the table tubing section and get back with you. Alright guys, we're gonna grind some of the paint off here so we can go ahead and weld that nut on. tacked on here. Since this thing is covered in paint, I need a good spot to ground off of. I think I'll just go off of this gusset here. some of the zinc off of this this nut here and I ground off the wrong side so I gotta flip that guy around like I said before I'm not afraid of the zinc but it sure keeps the porosity down especially with uh, 7018 rods
Try to clean her up here a little bit and then we'll weld her solid. Take the alfred out just to uh, keep the spider down. They have uh, spider sprays. Well, I can't remember what brand I've been around, but they work really well. If I had some of that, I'd coat the whole piece of alfred in spider spray, and then I wouldn't have to worry about BBs getting on there. And if they do get on there, they pop off really easy. Might be something to look into if you're doing a bunch of zinc, zinc work or cheap metal or fine finish work. Sure helps. Make sure most of the slag is out of there. to weld it in instead of having to weld out of position if you don't have to don't yeah it's good practice and I probably should be doing it but I'm not going to not today anyway. Come on. slid on me a little bit. That should be good enough. It's not going to take a whole bunch of torque. Let's see, we got to come in from this side. Here. And I'll probably have to grind these weld nuts here down just a little bit on this side so that it'll clear this plate here when it comes straight up and down 90 to everything else. Come on. I'll have to mess with that a little bit. Okay, this will be our solid side of the nut. Essentially we're turning that piece of all thread into a bolt. Uh, try to clean it up. Without running the lift right off of there apparently. So I hit it with the wire wheel and it spun the nut off. Is that guy? 
15, 16. The old impact So what I just realized, and this is kind of a stupid mistake, but that's that's how we learn. Sorry about that. Is this end has to spin for this to come back and forth, obviously for the thread to move. So that's not going to work at all because I'd have to unbolt this every time I wanted to screw it in or screw it out. So we're going to have to change that up with something sort of similar I need a swivel back to the drawing board down in the shop here looking for some sort of swivel to connect here to here and I just I don't have it I, I try to keep a lot of extra spare parts and stuff that could come in handy but I don't have anything that will work for that I ran into another problem at 90 degrees the plate doesn't match up because it's a satellite dish mount I guess they don't want it sticking straight up in the air so they really don't need that the closest I'm gonna get is here which is about I don't know not quite 45 so I think I'm gonna cut this plate off and flip it sideways so it's sticking up like this way and then I can hit either hole I need to and that should give me adjustment to 90 as far as going all the way this way I don't know we'll have to see once we get there but that's the plan for now I don't have uh, any material besides the 3 16 and the 14 gauge lying around I got some angle plate I could cut and use but I might as well turn that since it's going to be in the way hitting here anyway anyway that's the plan Get some of that weld cleaned out of there. I'll save you guys from watching that. I know grinding is fun, but I won't make you watch it. Right, got my plate set up where I want it. Lines up right there. Should be about 90 or close to it. I could always change a thread or two on the the pushing pulling bolt here. So we're going to weld that up right as it is.
keeps running away from me. Cranked up the amps on the old e subber here. We're running about 93, and that well's coming out nice and flat. And that will work. Cool. I can finally get this thing up on our pedestal we just made. And we'll see what she looks like. Kind of figure out what we're going to do for a tabletop. All right, we got her on the pedestal. Uh, I had to actually I made a I made a goof. I had to cut the pedestal down a little bit. She was too tall. I cut the brackets off the top. Here there were four of them on there. And I got it leveled out pretty well. And I checked the base. You check the base, make sure you're level under the base. And the higher the higher hieroglyphs here, excuse me. Hieroglyphs are from the little one. She came in and decided to draw all over everything. So that's compliments of her. And that's a decent height. That came out about 38. And I cut a little bit extra off. 40 seemed a little bit too high. Got the leveling bolt tightened down. Got our jack bolt tightened down. I need to try to find a swivel to make that work how I want it to. But Got the square head bolts in keep everything from spinning nice and sturdy so now we got to build a tabletop I kind of like the round makes it easy if you're welding around something you can kind of move with your table but I don't know if I have the means to to do that I've been burning through cut off wheels and might not have enough to make a round table so we might just make her square all right got her ground and ready for the the tabletop here but I've got spots along the outside I ground the paint off and then four spots here on the inside I ground the paint off so I'll weld it from up underneath and then around the outside but I wanted to talk about this because this is a rookie mistake I still make and if you're not making mistakes you're not learning but it might save you some headaches if you come in here underneath say the tabletop is on and weld this corner and weld this corner if you ever have to change that tabletop getting in there and cutting out a weld in the corner is kind of a pain so put your welds out where you can get to them with a cutoff wheel or a torch or whatever you got that makes it easier to repair stuff get to it later if you ever have to change your mind change the design keep welds out of corners makes it hard All right, I got the plate laid out kind of how I want. You can see the inner circle here is the, the actual two in two foot diameter <clears throat> part of the pedestal, and I'm just gonna 45 off the corners and kind of have a stop sign looking table here. But I think that'll look pretty cool, and then I can use the the cutoffs here as gussets for something else. We're gonna use our uh, 8 inch Milwaukee metal saw today so that's going to be the fastest way I can cut this stuff without dragging the plasma cutter and all the other junk out and I'll get some earplugs in and we'll get her fired up not the best material for making a tabletop but that's what I have so that's what we're going to use I like a nice half inch bunch of holes in it so you can put clamps and other stuff in. Get the saw adjusted here since we don't need to be going too far through the material. Bring it down here a little bit. Alright, let's give her hell.
Too sweet. Love that thing. Let's get this side cut. Hmm. Let's move this around. Over here. I'll keep cutting and when we get back to welding I'll get back to you. You can see guys I got the plate cut. We're gonna weld it to the pedestal here, but I can't I can't say enough how much that metal saw saves me time. I have a very nice plasma cutter. It's a hypertherm 1100, but to drag it out, drag the air compressors out, and keep the air compressors going to keep it running is so much of a pain when you can just cut it with a saw. So I actually saw that over on uh, Chucky 2009's web, uh, YouTube site, whatever. And I thought that was pretty cool, so I just had to get me one. Uh, we're going to go ahead and weld this about every 8 inches or so around the outside. Then I have my 4 spots on the inside to weld. It's probably going to warp a little bit, but uh, it's okay. When I get my big half inch plate, I'll, I'll not have to worry about that. Here we go. Just putting little one inch beads on everything. It's not going to go anywhere. Come on. Cross well, try to keep some of the heat down.
settings are a little high for this plate, but it's okay. sure how to act here. Ha! Now I need clamps. somewhere to hang the old stinger here. Not too bad for a bunch of free stuff. The only thing I actually paid for was the, uh, try not to arc on anything else today, the plate here. But fully adjustable, left, right, sideways, up and down. Comes complete with hieroglyphs. I did come back and uh, round all the edges off here with a pretty fine flat disc just because the little one likes to come out here and quote unquote help me. So, thanks for watching. Subscribe, comment, like, all that good nonsense. Thanks.